God's bathroom. That is the local name for Kenya's Mau Forest, stretching over the hills between the Rift Valley and Lake Victoria. It is the largest mountain forest in East Africa. It's also the wettest place in Kenya. Rain falls every day here for at least six months of the year. Water trapped by the Mau feeds 12 important rivers and five major lakes. But God's bathroom is under threat. Over the past 15 years, a quarter of the forest canopy has been lost. The enemy, human beings. Deforestation from illegal and ill-planned settlements, land appropriation and unlicensed logging have all taken a toll. The shrinking of Kenya's largest water tower is cause for concern for all East Africa. Kenya in Africa is one country with the low, one of the lowest uh, forest cover. It has a coverage of 1.9%. If you compare to other countries in Africa, or Central Africa for that matter, DRC has 68% coverage. Countries like uh, Equatorial Guinea, 60%. So 1.9, it's really one of the lowest. Saving and restoring the Mao forest is a priority to avoid an ecological disaster. The water is normally trapped by the trees. But if we have less trees, it means that the water will go down faster and it will not be able to sink into the soil and be trapped by the roots to be released slowly downstream. So if we interfere with the catchment here, it means that we are going to interfere with the lives of so many people in Africa. Water collected in the Mao fills Lake Victoria, which is also a major water source for Uganda and Tanzania. The mighty River Nile starts in Lake Victoria. So what happens in this forest will impact water supplies across Ethiopia, Sudan and Egypt, as far as the Mediterranean Sea. Kenya's economy is also involved. The Mao forest borders the center of one of its most lucrative crops, tea. British colonialists started tea plantation in the region because of the perfect wet growing conditions there. Today, tea accounts for a quarter of Kenya's export earnings. Thousands of jobs depend on the tea industry, which depends on the rainfall from the forest. The forests are resources, but well managed, well managed, these resources can be utilized for the current generation and for the next generation so that we don't take things today and deprive our generations to come of resources. Uh, so the solution to this is sustainable forest management. The idea is not to stop people going, but it's to go in a managed way to remove those forest resources which have to be removed because of the plan, the management plan says that. So that actually the other new plants can continue to grow. Uh, the idea is not to defend people to get the forest, because forests are resources which have been utilized. People uh, get medicinal plants, people get honey, people get uh, vegetables from the forest. The idea is not to deprive them to get in the forest, but it's go there with a managed way. <laughs> These are the Ogiek people who used to live exclusively from the forest without harming it in any way. We are going to the forest uh, to harvest uh, honey in the beef where we put it there. The honey is for food. At times we are sell, 
and the uh, honey also sometimes help us in doing traditional herbs like medicine and the honey is uh, sometimes using for medicines. But over the past few decades, the Ogeks mixed with other tribes and they too began clearing land for agriculture. In 2009, the government had no choice but to evict thousands of illegal settlers from the forest. Most were from other tribes, but the Ogeks had to live too. And the problem is that uh, those people who didn't have land just decided to go in and they settled, then they started destroying the vegetation and that's when the government moved in to evict them from the forest. The key now is to educate people who once lived in the forest and now live just outside it to earn a living using their resources sustainably. This is a farmer's field school set up by the UN's Food and Agriculture Organization and the Kenya Forest Service. First average height, that is 3.6 centimeters. Technology used, the DAP. It is one of 24 such schools involving 700 farmers across the western Mao. The farmers are taught to squeeze more from their land. They try out new crops and plant varieties, and they learn the importance of trees and how to plant them. This is an avocado tree. The farmers have planted the avocado trees together with other crops like tomatoes and potatoes. They want to use the avocado uh, tree because they want to use uh, fruits and also know how to plant trees and love how to plant trees and protect them because they are neighbors to this uh, Mao forest. <laughs> The farmer field schools place strong emphasis on team building and empowerment. Alice Bet is the host farmer for one school that meets weekly. She has lent her small plot of land for the farmers to try out new crops. <laughs> Financial skills are also taught. The FAO helps students compile business plans using its Rural Invest program so they can get loans from the bank. For many of the farmers, it is the first time they ever had a bank account. We are contributing savings 200 uh, per member every Monday. We are meeting every Monday at around uh, 3 p.m. And we are discussing a lot of issues concerning money. Farmer Simon Sine has just one installment to pay back on his $100 loan. I planted uh, potatoes, you can see them here, some are here. I planted also beans, I've harvested those ones. I've also planted uh, onions, carrots, I've planted them all. Women and men attend the farmer field schools in equal numbers. The students reflect the ethnic diversity of the region, one of the most mixed in Kenya. This is very important. This peaceful spot was one of the hotspots of the 2007-2008 post-election violence that claimed 1,200 lives in Kenya and displaced half a million people. Almeida Makori was one of the victims. She had to flee her home during the violence. Her livestock was stolen 
and she has only recently returned. Right now, I have nothing. I don't, I don't have those livestock. Some they were stolen and some which were left, some few. I was forced to sell because I migrated from this area to be an IDB somewhere, which affected me more. And even my, my house was not burned, but my relatives and my some other people around me, theirs were burned and, the, and the plus, plus nini, plus some things inside. So it made me to go back to zero until I was, I was helped by these people. The members of this field school group come from different Kenyan tribes that four years ago were fighting. Now, as in each farmer field school, they have established a tree nursery and grow trees together. In total, more than 200,000 seedlings have been grown. These farmers have, have developed self-esteem. They can be able to stand before people and speak, something they could not do many years ago. And the other area is that one of peace and reconciliation. During post-election violence, which rocked this country in 2008, we, many communities which had lived together for many decades, disintegrated, could not talk to each other, could not do anything together. But through this project, they came back, they can now dance together, they can run together, they can jump up together, they can laugh together, and they are doing things together. So this is very important for us, and we appreciate it. Farmer Field School graduate Lily Chepisor is now looking for a second loan from the bank using her rural invest designed business plan. I'll expand it and I'll, I'll expand my farm and I will use it also in paying my school fees for my children. I told you I have two children and they need, they want to be lawyers in the future and another one she, she wants to be a doctor. Mm. FAO and the Kenya Forest Service want to expand the farmer field schools all over the Mao so that other women like Lily can also plan their futures and so that the whole community is engaged in managing and protecting the forest to ensure the water in God's bathroom never runs out. <laughs> Go <laughs>